Welcome to Special News Channel. Russia came to the critical threshold because of the Ukrainian war. The Russian army lost hundreds of thousands of soldiers on the territory of Ukraine and came to a state of exhaustion. While leader Vladimir Putin cannot find soldiers for new reinforcements, the soldiers fighting at the front are about to leave Putin. Unable to withstand the success of the brave Ukrainian army, the Russian invaders began to flee without looking back. Having no hope of the winning the war, the Russian soldiers of the Moscow army find the solution by fleeing. As the Ukrainian army advanced, information came that the Russian forces did not even try to resist. Adopting NATO warfare standards, Ukraine has no difficulty in dealing with the Russian army focused on Soviet-era standards. The pressure of the Ukrainian troops crushed the Russian invaders. The failure in Ukraine caused widespread anger in Russia. The military's continued underestimation of its setbacks on the battlefield has long since lost public confidence in the Russian Ministry of Defense and in the government as a whole. Russian President Vladimir Putin tried many ways to change the bad course in Ukraine, but without success. As part of the latest partial mobilization decree, propaganda began to be made in Russia that mocked men fleeing from the country to neighboring countries to avoid conscription. Russian propaganda videos began to spread in a short time on social media. At the same time, the video tries to shove the men who stayed in Russia as men and those who escaped as children. After Putin announced a partial military mobilization on September 21, hundreds of thousands of Russians fled the country to neighboring countries including Georgia, Finland, Kazakhstan and Mongolia. Those who were sent to the front were either dead or struck in the front. Defense Minister Sergei Shoigo announced that Russia will target 300,000 reservists and former military personnel with certain military expertise and relevant experience. However, the latest updated figures in Putin's decree have not been made public. The Kremlin announced the end of partial mobilization on October 31. However, the ISW still assessed that Russia was secretly mobilizing troops. Meanwhile, the Special Operations Forces of Ukraine one of the five branches of the Ukrainian Armed Forces announced on February 2023 that a new wave of mobilization is expected in Russia. The Kremlin has so far denied plans for another mobilization phase. The Ukrainian army continues to take every step cautiously in order not to miss the momentum and advantage it gained in the war. The Ukrainian army which continues its attacks with all its might by reading the moves of Russian leader Putin is also able to take the lost lands. Finally, the Ukrainian army's defeat of the Russian invaders in the Kharkiv region with its success took a large place on the country's agenda. A Ukrainian counteroffensive to the Kharkiv region in the east of the country quickly liberated the area from Russian control in September and caused President Vladimir Putin's troops to flee. Nearly three months later, a senior military official from a Ukrainian bridge that helped liberate the region brought new perspective to how Ukraine managed to take Vovchansk, one of the last Russian strongholds in Kharkiv. Shortly after declaring a counterattack in the southern Kherson region in late August, Ukraine launched its surprise move in the Kharkiv region in September. Later that month, Ukraine announced that it had liberated the vast majority of the region from Russian control. Vovchansk is a city of Kharkiv just three kilometers from the Russian border. Ukraine's 113th Bridget Press spokesperson Andriy Nesmian stated in an interview published last Friday that Russian forces in Kharkiv collapsed under pressure from Ukrainian troops. According to Nesmian, one of Russia's mistakes in the invasion of Kharkiv was that it positioned the front line hundreds of kilometers in the region and did not build the second or third lines of defense. Nesmian explained that in Vovchansk, the Russian soldiers did not even take basic defensive measures, such as preparing strong defense lines behind the first line and placing someone on a high point for reconnaissance and snipers. Ukraine, on the other hand, was one step ahead in its efforts to retake Kharkov because most of the soldiers in the bridge were local and had personal knowledge of the cities and villages they were trying to liberate. At the same time, Ukraine has adopted NATO warfare standards while the Russian military is still largely focused on Soviet-era standards. This means that the ability of Russian soldiers to adapt to difficult situations may suffer due to tight control of Russian military officers, while Ukrainian detachments and battalions have the freedom to make decisions on how to reach their targets on land in real time. Nesmian added that the Vochansk natives also provided some assistance to the Ukrainian soldiers but that their capture in the meantime 
but them in a risk of torture or death. Since the town was liberated in September, many residents fears that they might see more conflict are over. Ukraine's state news agency reported last Friday that of Bovchansk, 17,000 residents, only 4,500 remain, and the number of survivors is decreased day by day. The exodus of Vovchansk residents coincided with the closure of shops, pharmacies and other businesses. Although the Russians are no longer occupying the town, Vovchansk is not immune from the effects of the war that began on February 24 and continued for more than nine months. Russia's missile attacks on Ukraine have deprived Vovchansk dwindling population of eating services, city officials reported last Friday. In a statement he shared earlier, Putin stated that the resolution process of the Ukraine issue will not be simple and will take time. In addition, the Russian leader claimed that one way or another, all participants in this process will have to accept the realities on the ground. In response, alliance members stood behind Ukraine, which was de-energized in the middle of winter when Putin rained missiles on its electricity and water infrastructure, while the Kiev administration wanted faster weapons to be sent Estonia defended sending missiles to Ukraine that could target Russian territory. NATO has pledged to supply Ukraine with more weapons and to repair its energy infrastructure which has been badly damaged by Russian missile and drone strikes. At the summit in Bucharest, NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg accused Moscow of trying to use the winter season as a weapon of war. Due to Russia's attacks, millions of Ukrainians were left without electricity and water in the freezing cold. Ukraine has been demanding more advanced air defense systems from NATO for months. According to Geneva Convention, attacks on Ukrainian civilians and infrastructure vital to their survival can be interpreted as war crimes. The ministers of justice of the G7 countries meeting in Berlin also decided to coordinate the investigations into alleged war crimes in Ukraine. On this subject, the German Minister of Justice, Marco Buschmann, said that the judicial evolution of the massacres in Ukraine will take years, maybe even decades, but we will be well prepared and we will persist no matter how long it takes. Russian President Vladimir Putin and other senior Kremlin officials naturally deny allegations of war crimes committed by Moscow army forces. NATO also later issued a written statement announcing that Russia's persistent attacks on Ukrainian civilians and the energy grid have deprived millions of basic human services. The statement stressed that NATO members will help Ukraine repair its energy infrastructure in protect its people from missile attacks. The war between Russia and Ukraine shows that it will continue for a while as Russia gains time by slowing down the war. Especially with the approaching winter conditions, it looks like both countries will wear out badly under difficult conditions. But the arrival of the military and financial aid planned to be sent to the Ukrainian army may provide the advantage in the war to Zelensky's soldiers. In particular, the attitude of the USA on this issue is very important. The decisions of the Washington administration, which has provided more than $20 billion in military aid to the Ukrainian army so far, will shape the Ukrainian army's attacks and offensive plans this winter against the invading troops. Russia, on the other hand, is in a very bad situation in terms of ammunition. We hope that this aid reaches the Ukrainians just in time. If you want to follow the hot developments closely, do not forget to subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching us.